Hi everybody, it's Nathan Cool with Swellwatch on SurfingMagazine.com. It's October 22nd, 2015. Time for another El Nino video. Keep you updated on what's been happening over the last couple of months. This time around I wanted to concentrate on what everybody's been calling the blob. It's the Northeast Pacific Warm Anomaly. And we know that a lot of the water temperatures have been very warm in the El Nino region, which would be off the, uh, the coast of Peru, off the coast of Ecuador, and mostly around what would be the equatorial latitudes. But there's been a lot of excessive warm water that's also been hanging around in the northeast portion of the Pacific. And uh, that's been called the blob for a variety of reasons, uh, but it is a very anomalous uh, mass of warm water. Actually, there's three of them. I'm going to be showing some of the details on that as well. But I wanted to show why that's really having the effect that it is. It, can El Nino be so strong that this actually backs it up? Could it have some other type of adverse effect? Is it really just a natural cycle? Is something else behind it? And what can we really expect out of this as the winter is starting to approach? We haven't seen anything like this before, but there's a lot of information that we can glean from this and put a little bit of science behind it, a little bit of the research that's been going on, and we can get a pretty good idea of what we might expect. So let me show you everything that's going on right now. So this is what we know as the blob. We can see that uh, there's a lot of warm water that's in the uh, equatorial Pacific. That's our El Nino zone right there. A lot of other warm water though that's been up here and in Northeast Pacific. And that's why technically speaking, it's gotten the new name of the Northeast Pacific Warm Anomaly. Uh, it's still being called the blob. It was actually identified as that uh, originally, but it's kind of a misnomer because there's more than one blob. So when this was starting to evolve in around 2014, um, especially, there were three areas that were of greatest concern. One was up in the, uh, the Bering Sea region, that's our first blob. We've got another one that's in the Gulf of Alaska, and the other one that's off here, off of California. And there's, uh, if you've been surfing at all this this year off of uh, the, the West Coast, you know that the water temperatures have been extremely warm. We've seen uh, hammerhead sharks up uh, here in Ventura. We even had, uh, just last week, a, a venomous sea snake that's more indigenous to Mexico actually wash up on Silver Strand Beach. But the development of that is actually something quite interesting. So I wanted to show you that. And this starts back October 3rd, uh, 2013. And I want to start moving that forward in time. You can see at that time, there was still a lot of cold water that was up in the Gulf of Alaska. Not a whole lot of anything anomalous. Even El Nino wasn't really starting to form. As we start moving forward, we can start seeing that around uh, the beginning of 2014, we can see that blob is really starting to take shape up here. And that's when it first started to really get noticed. And people are wondering, what the heck's going on? Notice El Nino now as we move forward in time. Here we are last summer, in uh, July, I should say, of 2014, starting to take form. And the blob is really starting to go nuts. A lot of anomalous warm water, and you can see it's even up here into the Bering Sea. And this was where the first blob was noticed. It's like, yeah, we've got blob one, we've got blob two, and here we've got blob three starting to form when we were into September of 2014. And it's kind of waxed and waned a little bit over time, but as time went on, overall, it really started to gain a lot of strength. As El Nino grew, so did the blobs, or the uh, Northeast Pacific Warm anomalies, as there is definitely more than one. So as that uh, even went further in time, we can start seeing that, yeah, we've got still a very good blob uh, or a Northeast Pacific Warm Anomaly up in the Gulf. We've got quite a bit of anomalous waters that are off of California and in between there and Hawaii. And that's part of the reason, too, why we've had so many hurricanes that have taken the uh, an unbelievable path coming from Hawaii toward us, including Olaf, which is uh, being tracked right now uh, earlier this morning before I put this video report together. So that's kind of what's been happening lately with it, but why is that? So one of the things that is uh, thought to have happened is that we might be in just another, seeing a warm phase of the PDO. We know that the PDO has gone higher, and if you're unfamiliar with what I'm talking about here, I'd encourage you to maybe watch some of the uh, earlier videos that I have on this YouTube channel. We can see that in a warm phase of the, the PDO, it looks very similar to a warm phase of ENSO, or El Nino, um, in that we do have warmer waters that do tend to hug the west coast. But it does more so when we're in a warm phase of the PDO. So when you combine that with El Nino, you tend to have a lot more warm water. So that's one of the theories going on out there, but there's a lot more to it. Taking a look once again, just a recap from, from previous videos, when we take a look at the El Nino years, we know that when we take a look at the PDO, 
And this is then the positive cycles of warmth, you know, the cycles of cold. When we were in 1997 during that El Nino, sure enough, we had a strong PDO. The same thing is happening again now. So when we overlay those two things together, we can see that they pretty much coincide. So here's 97, here's the 8283, and there was a very strong uh, positive warm PDO signal. Same thing's happening right now. So that could be part of it, right? We do know that when we take a look at the PDO and some of the recent measurements, sure enough, just like here's 1997 in blue, in purple we've got 2015, we're in a stronger PDO than in prior El Nino years. So when we look at 1997, we can see that, yeah, we didn't have as much anomalous water. We did have a PDO signal that was hugging the coast. We had a very strong El Nino, but the PDO was just fairly moderate, even though it showed that it was actually a very strong signal. So when we take a look at what's going on right now, well, that doesn't really make a lot of sense. We still have this excessively warm water, very much unlike what we saw in 1997. And this is one of the reasons why. This has been called the Ridiculously Resilient Ridge. You might have remembered a uh, video report I put together a little over a year ago talking about that blocking high pressure that we had in the Gulf of Alaska. You can see it here by the lack of cloud cover that we have. And that high pressure was circulating clockwise. You can see it was taking storms that wanted to form and just driving them high up into the latitudes and near the uh, Aleutian chain and Gulf of Alaska, and we were just staying dry. Well, when this happens without the cloud cover, there's a lot of sunlight hitting the water. So we actually had a lot more warmth over an extended period of four years as California was in a drought. As clouds and storms weren't coming our way, the waters off the oceans were also heating up quite well. So something when it comes to El Nino, and all of this great warm water. This is what normally happens. This is a great image from Wikipedia, and it shows uh, what's called the atmospheric bridge. It's, it's also known as a Rosby wave, and those are the things that actually transport heat content across the globe. And when we have an El Nino, we've got a lot of convection, uh, a lot of uh, warmth. It's being transported so that that warmth ends up in the Aleutian area. And of course, when we have that warm water in this area, we've got even more low pressure. And so going back to the basics, remember that if you've got uh, cold ocean water, but it is warm even at the surface, you're going to have evaporation. You've got low pressure. So the air is rising, eventually it causes storms. That's why low pressure systems are associated with that, and it's uh, rising up toward the cold air. So going back to the basics of what El Nino is doing, we can see that when we've got this Rosby uh, wave heat transport going on, and we've got especially then the, the excessively warm waters, we're getting a more intensified low pressure system that could happen off the Gulf. And so this is an interesting thing that even though we know when we take a look at El Nino, yep, we've got that low pressure. It's a result of those warm waters that were off the equatorial Pacific. It's circulating uh, counterclockwise and driving storms towards Southern California. But if that low pressure system is strong enough, and if it sits there and it's very persistent, and it sits there long enough, we're going to get something else. And this is what could be, it's not necessarily El Nino-esque. This is something that's just from a very persistent large area of low pressure that can happen, and it's known as an atmospheric river. Sometimes you'll hear the term arc storm used, and that's one of the worst case scenarios, atmospheric river storms that uh, could possibly come in. Low pressure in the Gulf. Here we are, it's, it's circulating counterclockwise. You can kind of see then what happens. It taps in to a moisture plume that's to the south of it. In this case, this is known as the Pineapple Express. And you can get a pretty good idea of the vapor that comes off of it. We've got a lot of uh, moisture that's coming off of the uh, equatorial uh, Pacific. You've got low pressure that's spinning counterclockwise. If it taps into it, it can keep drawing moisture and more moisture and more moisture as precipital rain to the west coast. In this case, this was in February 5th, uh, 2015, and it brought a lot of rain to the Pacific Northwest and up in uh, points north. So where are we at right now with that? Well, if we take a look, this is a recent long-range model uh, from NOAA, and we can see the development that's happening right now. We have a lot of low pressure that is now starting to form here in October. And with that, yeah, that's very indicative now of the El Nino because at Rosby Transport, uh, it's got that link to where if we've got warm equatorial waters from El Nino, you're gonna have low pressure in the Gulf. Great, we see that right here. The high pressure area, very small. We're not seeing the resiliently ridiculous ridge, so that's pretty much gone. So we are definitely in an El Nino. And that means also the jet stream is gonna 
going to lower and storms have a better chance of coming in once winter gets a little bit closer to us. But the other thing is, just like we showed for the atmospheric river storms, this low pressure, if it does stay strong, if it can stay persistent, then it could cause the atmospheric river type storm and bring that in. But there's something else besides that. That's another possibility just for rain that could happen this winter. But there's something very disturbing else that's going on right now, and not a lot of people are talking about it. It has been in the news for the last couple of weeks. You might have noticed something from the other sea surface temperatures I ran through, is that there's a cold blob that's over in the Atlantic. This is very disturbing. It could be that, oh sure, we, we don't really know why, but it could be that, you know, because we've got, uh, you know, there's uh, some type of very warm water in the Pacific that in a cyclic formation typical with Earth it has some type of equilibrium and there's this cold blob over here. Here's another one here, but this is the one that's the most uh, dire right now. That's got everybody's attention. Why? Because that cold water means that we could have a break in what's known as the THC. Uh, not, not from what you might think, the thermohaline circulation. And this is linked to the Gulf Stream. And this is where uh, the, the movie The Day After Tomorrow and all that was based off the fact that the thermohaline Hailing circulation stopped. And one of the fears of climate change is that this could also be affected too. We know that the waters up in that region where the cold blob is starting to form seem to have a, uh, a difference in salinity. So because of that, we're not seeing brine inclusion. Um, that could be going on right now. Other things that actually get and keep the thermohaline circulation flowing. If that changes and it does disrupt the, the, Gulf, uh, the, the Gulf Stream, as we're seeing here, um, then yes, we could have even more dire consequences later. Definitely off topic, not really uh, a topic for this particular video, but it is something that has to be watched. When we talk about the blob, sure, we've got a lot of it here, but we've got something cold going on, which could lead to other consequences later on. So that's it kind of in a nutshell. That's kind of what's going on with the blob. Uh, what is it? Well, it's pretty much a, probably a combination of a couple things. We know that we're going into a very warm PDO cycle. So we've got that going for us. We know that we had a ridiculously resilient ridge for a very long time uh, over in the Gulf. It, it uh, worked against us for storms and for, um, you know, it, it hurt the drought in California and also didn't bring much swell over the last few years uh, for our winters. But what it's done though is it's also warmed those waters up uh, quite a bit. Now with that combination of having the blob and having those strong El Nino waters, what's going to happen? Well, long story short, we really don't know, but there's a pretty good guess. Uh, definitely we're going to have a strong El Nino either way. Two scenarios could possibly happen. We already know that from El Nino, statistically there's a very good link that the jet stream will lower to right over the latitudes of Southern California, between Southern and Northern California. And that's because we've got, because of the Rosby wave transport and also statistical links from past years, we've got then low pressure systems that are guiding the, uh, the jet stream in that region. So that's almost an inevitable that that will happen. The other, though, uh, mystery is will this cause more atmospheric river type storms over the winter? If it does, we don't want to see a repeat of 1862. If you get some time, Google it, 1862 California flood, and you'll see that there was about 200,000 cattle got, uh, were, were, died during those, those floods uh, in the late 1800s. Uh, many people, there was a great loss of life, uh, immense loss of property as well. Um, when it rains in California, it can rain very hard, and we're due for a very strong atmospheric river type storm. It's a like a hundred year event. So that could also happen. What's it going to mean for surf? Atmospheric river storms aren't going to do anything for us as far as surf. If anything, it'll just foul up conditions because it'll just keep raining. And since they're sitting there parked and they don't necessarily have a lot of strong winds with them, not necessarily a lot of good ground swell. We might get wind swell out of it. What we want to see when it comes to surf is El Nino storms that become very strong, come out of the Western Pacific, just like they did during 1997, 1998, and they uh, can send us energy before the rains arrive. And so we can actually see big swells that are arriving then. So that's how things are looking right now, but there's still a lot that needs to be monitored, especially with that cold blob and what that could mean for coming winters and possible signs of other climate change that could be upon us. In the meantime, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel be updated uh, as soon as reports like this uh, are uh, that I post these. Uh, it's totally free, won't cost you anything, and you'll just get a notice from uh, YouTube that, hey, I've got another one of those uh, videos posted and you can watch. You can also follow my forecasts on surfingmagazine.com. Just go to forecasts.surfingmagazine.com, and I concentrate on Southern California. If you want to, you can also follow me on Facebook. Why not? It's at 
facebook.com slash Nathan Todd Cool. I post updates there from time to time as soon as I see some stuff. And of course, Facebook doesn't always give you the best alerts. That's why if you follow me on the forecasting site on surfingmagazine.com and also subscribe to this YouTube channel, you're sure to definitely be notified as soon as new events are starting to take place. That's it for now, though. So until next time, take care, be safe, and smile in the lineup.